Welcome to CapeCast. We are continuing our weekly reviews of The Mandalorian. Um, this week we're reviewing Chapter 13, The Jedi. And we are here with a new friend this evening, Jeff. Hello, new friend. Hi, Jeff. Howdy. And, and Hi, Al. Hey, Al. You can speak. <laughs> can't wave you can't wave out of frame right so it doesn't make sense so. <laughs> and brandon hi how you doing brandon great doing good good you doing good doing great it's good to be awesome. here with awesome. all of you tonight all right so i want to give a little bit of a background for why we've got jeff on here tonight um jeff is like replacing the out. ultimate yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is awkward <laughs> Just move that bottom square out of yeah. there. <laughs> Jeff slides in. <laughs> uh, so Jeff is kind of the, or our resident, um, I don't know what they call it now, the extended universe of Star Wars. But yeah, all legacy. Universe. Is it called, yeah, it's is it called, called legacy? legacy? Yeah. Yeah. Legacy. There you go. It's not. You're, like, you're, a, like, you're a Star you're Wars book reader. Final. I am, yeah. Yeah, you're a Star Wars book reader. I remember that. He one. had he he gave me a, a few years back. He gave me this giant like it's like three boxes full of like packed like Tetris full of Star Wars books. <laughs> He's like, uh, my wife told me I had to get these out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever have if you ever have to do that again, I know a good place for those to go. My nephew is a Star Wars book junkie. He well, I've got some he can read if he wants. <laughs> oh my gosh. He, I, I, I think we've within the family probably spent a quarter of a million dollars on books just for him because he can read four Holy or five moly. books. He can read four or five books a week, and he pulls down the. Star See, Wars I, I was blown him. away just by Katie reading a book over Thanksgiving break. That's one book. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way Brandon's that over in, there. Like, what's reading? <laughs> that's the way that I was in high school. You got to remember, oh, really? like, yeah. yeah, like when Star Wars was out. In what the late eighties? What was when? When did Jedi come out? Eighty three uh, or something. Yeah, mid eighties. Yeah. Yeah, and then there was nothing. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. in the early nineties. So is that is that when did it? Ta- what was the gap between? It was like ten years when like Jedi years, came out. Nine years between. Okay. The, well, I mean, there were some books that kind of sprinkled in, but the yeah. big one that. Ties but like into the meat this, of it. Yeah, the, the the one that really ties into this episode was. <laughs> the Heir to the Empire was released in, I think, 92. Okay. Um, so I was uh, I was in middle school at that point, but I didn't read these until high school. Mm. Gotcha. Um, so there was just, you know, like a desert of no Star Wars. And then this these books started to trickle in. And I was yeah. like a hardcore fan from really from kindergarten to because I saw Jedi in the theater when I was a kid. And then mm. um, my parents... Man, you had to like so we, you know, I grew up on VHS, and you, in order to be able to watch movies, if you didn't have a VHS, be kind, player, rewind. You had to rent one, and one year my parents got this was like the kind of the groundbreaking thing for me with my Star Wars love was my parents bought a VCR in all three movies at once, and I was like glued mm. to the set for <laughs> for like a solid year after that. Um, Something wrong yeah. with the Jeff kid. <laughs> all it does is just watch Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I was like craving more, so the the books like helped to fill in those gaps. And when all the new stuff, I don't want to harp on the. Is books it no? Anymore. I mean, was it a was it a was it a you know the Mandalorian <clears throat> and all this new Star Wars content that's come out has kind of been like a little bit of a rebirth of the fandom for younger kids. Was there any? Was it any kind of like? Obviously, maybe not comparable, but like cultural thing around those books coming out or was it just like a niche Not to my knowledge i think it was a niche okay i think it was like gotcha. lucas trying to test the waters to see if there mm-hmm. was like any sort of like draw for the star wars yeah. universe outside of the gotcha. movies you know and, and gotcha. then what when did um it was like late 90s early 2000s when 99 i think when the yeah the prequels came out or not, sorry, yeah. not the prequels, the re-release and then the prequels. So yeah, yeah. it was like a, yeah. slow, gotcha. I think it was like a slow build, <laughs> slow burn to get to that point. So I think the the biggest question is, were you a Star Wars holiday special fan? Oh man, <laughs> no. 
I don't think anybody <laughs> is. <laughs> have you have you about, have you actually watched it from <clears throat> the yes, beginning? Yes, yeah, it's yes. awful. It is pretty rough. Wasn't the, there the, an Ewok uh, shows Chewbacca's as well? Family. What was that? There was like an Ewok movie as well, or two. Yeah, yeah. There was. I was I was big into Ewoks, but I was so young I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to like the, like those those side projects, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, there used to be these little uh, dolls when we were kids called Munchie Cheese, where you could oh, yeah, stick yeah. their thumb in their mouth and stuff like that. And I confused the two, and I because they were like little monkeys and little hairy characters, so. I thought they were the same thing. So the eighties came out with many a weird character. It was good. Times. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, let's kind of, uh, like we do with all these episodes, just kind of go around the horn and, um, just give quick general thoughts, whether you liked it or didn't like the episode. Um, and we'll start with Al today. <laughs> go for it, Al. Uh, firing squad. Uh, I thought this episode there, you know, it's it was good. Um, I don't remember the girl's name. I know Rosario Dawson, but I don't know the character's name. Uh, so Katana. Yeah, sure. And um, like yeah, that, whatever. She yeah. has a name. I don't know it. <laughs> Too cool to know it. Not gonna look it up. Moving on. <clears throat> Star Wars for kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I just can't I can't retain all the different. I've, I've told you guys that. Before. I'm just messing with you. <clears throat> but um, yeah. I joking. don't. And I'm not going to get into this right now, but I don't know how I feel about giving the child a name. You know, yeah. so I'll leave that for discussion later. So could have picked a better uh, overall, name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> overall, though, I thought the episode was really good. Um, and uh, I was like, I told you a couple weeks ago, I was kind of worried with the uh, Katie Sackhoff. <laughs> yeah, uh, she. Yeah, boy. They keep um, showing her in the uh, little episode intro things, and I'm like, great, now Al's going to hate the episode again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I skipped those, so it works out. Uh, but no, I felt this one was uh, a little more gritty. Uh, I liked all the characters except for the the queen or whatever she was, the emperor lady or empress or whatever she was. Um, mm-hmm. But other than that, I liked pretty much everybody, and I thought the visuals were pretty cool. So, Cool. Brandon? Uh, I dug this episode a lot. It's probably my favorite episode <laughs> so far uh, of this season. Um, you say that every week, I think. <laughs> yeah, but they keep getting better. <laughs> this might be my hey, favorite episode. Wait, of well the done, series. Disney. <laughs> I've watched this one three times so far. Um, oh. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, I was I was excited when the rumors that Rosario Dawson was going to be cast, supposedly cast as Ahsoka. That's a character I don't know a ton about, but I know like it's a character I think that most Star Wars fans are familiar with, but probably don't know much about if you don't like watch the right. Clone Wars TV show or Rebels or whatever. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So she's like the most popular, I guess in my opinion, she seems to be the most popular non like film character. Um and um but yeah, it was exciting to see her and they kind of didn't waste any time. I mean, they kind of opened you know, I figured they, yeah. you know, kind of build that up a little bit more. But yeah, they just kind of jump run right out the gate with it. Um, but no, I thought it was great. It was like a very like, uh, like Japanese Western inspired oh, yeah. type. Uh, you know, I guess uh, Akira Kurosawa type um, mm. episode, which they've had a few of those so far anyway. But um, <clears throat> but no, I, I I loved it. I thought that. I mean, we'll get into more specifics, but I just thought it was across the board. It was good to have lightsabers in the Mandalorian. And yes, yes, it was. I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> laser, laser swords. I, I know. I lo- We've got the purest <laughs> well, already have, shaking his head. A, I have questions for you guys about that. About the yeah. laser sword comment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, right. Anyway, overall, now. I loved well, it, and I, I kind of agree with Al as far as the the Grogu thing. I think they could have picked a better name. It's kind of a weird, I don't know. Um, it's kind of I mean, not Yoda my favorite. I don't know. It's Grogu true. is just, it doesn't sound as like cutesy. Too many syllables. Doesn't, I have it's not no as cutesy. issues how with though, the name. Yeah. How though, well, how though. Although I I did think it provided <laughs> some some good humor every time. Brandon, <laughs> every Brandon time wanted said, him called Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Huh? Now I love that every time he said Grogu, he was like, huh? Like, yeah. Grogu, huh? 
<laughs> like that was that <laughs> makes for some good comedy. Uh, yeah. and Baby Yoda always makes for good comedy. But yeah, overall, two Indeed. major thumbs up. Nice, Jeffrey. Man, I Fire felt away. like uh, the Star Wars universe finally threw me a freaking bone. Um, I was Thrawn. so excited. I got Are you excited I, about I have Thrawn. To say, I have yes. to say, um, yeah, my nephew I, was too. Uh, uh, first off, Jeff will, will be the first to admit that he hates pretty much everything that they've done new for Star Wars. What Star Wars was it? For we Rogue all saw one. together? We saw Rogue One. Yeah, and you did not like that. I, I didn't uh, like it. No. And you were because uh, I found out that night you were a, bu- a book purist, and um, <clears throat> I can't. I ended up liking Rogue One just because of the grit of it, and yes. I'm not baked into Star Wars like everybody else, so I don't know all the the lore and I don't remember all the lore and everything. But I felt like I was looking at me walk out of a movie that night, and it felt good. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, <was> like, <laughs> it felt good. So for once, I was like, oh, this is so what it's like what to be on the other like. end of this. Yeah, <laughs> so disappointing. No, no, so, and- but anyways, I, I, I got this text from Jeff after he watched the episode. He said... <laughs> He said, just watch the latest Mando. This is, all caps, amazing, with like 20 exclamation marks. He says, only time since Return of the Jedi I've been so happy. Dude, I got up and danced. <laughs> I did. I did. When they- and it made, me, that, it made me laugh so what hard. Part you made you, what part solidified it the, for you? The, the Thrawn uh, yeah. nod there, yeah. <clears throat> that's, yeah. What I, that's what I texted him back. I was like, I assume we're talking about Thrawn. <laughs> yeah, it was... <laughs> Yeah, because it's, it's it's a nod to the books, and there are so many directions that it could potentially go in if they yeah. start to bring characters from that universe into the Mandalorian. Um, overall, like the the whoever um, the whoever the DP was, I thought did a fantastic job as far as like mm-hmm. yeah. blocking shots and like whoever did the post production as far as the grading. It felt like a Star Wars film. Or a Star Wars episode should. Um, yeah. The yeah, I just felt like <clears throat> what's his name, uh, Dave Filoni, like yeah. really understands the concept. Uh, we call him what, Pedro. Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> he he gets it, and um, I'm glad that they have him on on staff with Lucasfilm or with Disney, I guess at this point, um, to help bring those aspects, those like small details that you would normally miss in the larger movies um sure because i don't think was he part of any of the new movies uh i don't i don't think he was involved in so. the creative no. process I at think, least not on the forefront I mean, it, he was he shows. was involved he's he's been involved in i think like clone wars is like his baby okay um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the animated stuff but yeah overall yeah. I, I was i loved it i thought i thought it was great grogu didn't bother me at all i thought that was so you did say something you were going to comment about uh, lightsabers. What were yeah, you at the beginning of the... So for me, like, I don't... Like, this show's about the Mandalorian, and maybe they'll move past it. I think that the story should only be about the Mandalorian. However, I see why they deviated slightly to bring another character into the mix. And the thing is, is with lightsabers, like, it can go one of two ways. It can go the prequels, where it's, like, over-the-top, crazy lightsaber battles that just don't make any sense and sure. that are humanly possible. Too much choreography. Yeah, it's just like, are we going <clears> to <throat> tango at the end of this as well? <laughs> yeah. Versus, um, uh, you know, the new films lacked choreography and, like, it just felt disjointed. This felt like there was enough, they showed enough and didn't show enough in order to be able to prove a point. Of, like, her- Yeah, it felt like it felt like kind of like kung fu with lightsabers. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> like it was great. Yeah, I thought that the balance that they struck was appropriate. Um, so yeah, can I ask you a question, Jeff? Mm-hmm. So I've said for the last couple episodes, anyway, that it kind of feels like they're trying to get the member berries in there subtly. You know, like they had, um, like some kind of tagging or something like that with C three PO, like graffiti and such uh, on one episode, and so on and so forth. And so do you feel like that's part? Because sometimes it feels like in Star Wars world, they're like, hey, we don't really have anything to go on in this scene. We're just going to throw a a lightsaber battle in here, you know, because that'll get everybody excited. 
do you feel like it it actually flows well because you're a purist or do you think that adding lightsabers to this uh kind of detracts from well let me say this at the beginning of the season when my wife and i started watching it i said if i see a lightsaber in this <clears throat> or in the series i'm out and, <laughs> <laughs> okay and then when i saw the lightsaber they saved it just at the right time to be mm. able to I think what they're what they're doing is they have one storyline that they've been trekking on for a while and mm. now they have two and I think they'll break it and they'll have three at some point because yeah. my thoughts about if you bring in Thrawn and you like at the end of the episode where um, Dawson's character says take him to the like the memory rock or whatever and have him sit on it if if he reaches out and another jedi comes to um comes to find yeah, him call. Yeah. yeah that he'll that you know that'll be his destiny so there aren't a lot of other jedis that are alive at this point right everyone's been killed right there's luke and then there's yeah. there's only one other one that i know of that's force sensitive that are in that is in the books and if they bring that character back it would open up like it would be quite amazing who is it mara jade okay probably like That's, one of the, you know, the biggest fan, yeah fan favorites as far as yeah. star wars characters is concerned in the in the book series <laughs> so, related related to han solo right in some mm -hmm. capacity no, no she was the emperor's no. hand so she was an assassin okay. for the emperor gotcha during like Vader's reign. <laughs> i am it's true <laughs> so uh can That's i ask why you, he's here <laughs> can i ask you another question Jeff? Yeah. um so and this might be a prickly one. If you had somebody to take Star Wars forward completely just in charge of all of Star Wars, John Favreau, Kathleen Kennedy. Oh, or Favreau, Jeff Gaines. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I think he actually cares about the fans. Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, so, that was the I, reason why I said I felt like he threw me a bone. It was it, mm -hmm. it, it, because it was Dave Filoni, the guy that had, who is the encyclopedia of all the Star Wars knowledge. Because he worked on mm -hmm. um, the animated series as well as working closely with George Lucas. So he <laughs> right. kind of mm -hmm. knows the ins and outs of what Lucas is going to think about things and how that fits into the universe. But then you have Favreau, who has all of this extensive directing and acting knowledge that can can funnel or focus Filoni's energies into a project in order to make something that's going to be great. I think Kathleen Kennedy produced three turds, four five turds and her, her <laughs> tenure with star wars i think the han solo movie being the biggest turd of them all i could let me say this like i watched that i didn't see it in the theater i was like i'm not going to do that to myself and i'm not going to pay the money to go see it <laughs> i saw it on a work retreat in maine um at a lake house and i didn't watch the, i watched maybe 40 minutes of the movie and then i walked out it was such a stupid movie i have choice <laughs> words to say about it but i'll keep it well to be fair, <laughs> to be fair kathleen I kennedy like the produced this so i mean yeah but under the direction <laughs> or under with the direction of somebody who actually knows what they're doing well let's say let's let's throw the producing title on there a little loosely because really she's just in charge of the overall she's not she's not in she, I don't think she pulls the strings on this show as much. I think John Favreau kind of slapped her hands a little bit in order for him to be. Yeah, well, I, like I don't know. Uh, like, I think Brandon, you're probably a little bit more knowledgeable as far as like the inner workings of the Disney Beast and how all of that, the dynamics of the executive producers work, <clears throat> um, and, and who's worked on what. So you tell me, like, well, is. Kennedy been she's been the primary like she she's driver, president right? of Lucasfilm so she's you know had that <clears throat> role for I mean ever since there yeah there's so there's there's rumors that she's going to be stepping away at some point and that Favreau could stepping away <laughs> or pushed away here's the thing though I mean you know she I mean? was she was put in kind of a thankless task uh, to kind of reinvigorate Star Wars at a time where there wasn't anything. And sure. she, I would say that they did make a big misstep by going woke. I'm just saying <laughs> by, um, well, I, I think they made a misstep by not by letting 
essentially they were going to let three different directors do what they wanted to with a Skywalker like continuation, you know, setting, you know, they, they basically took the wrong approach building yeah. out three new episodes and had a great, in my opinion, I know you didn't like force awakens. I love for force awakens. I mean, and it's, a, it's a lesser of three evils for sure. And, and, I felt, and, well, this sounds like me talking. Seriously. I love it. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is what Brandon, this is what I told you I was worried about. Yeah. <laughs> the balance of power. Oh my God. Equal. Jeff and I are starting a podcast. <laughs> yeah, you, now on Criterion yeah. Corner. <laughs> yeah, you can be in Criterion <laughs> Corner. We'll give them to you. <laughs> now, I just I that I I will agree with that sentiment that people have that they should have, you know, basically talked to each other as far as the directors. Like Ryan Johnson seemed like he just like said, "Yes, I saw you set all this stuff up, but we're not going to do any of that, and we're just going to do what I want to do." And well, he and made Luke Skywalker can't, like an impotent like <laughs> individual that didn't care. Like he, like what happened? <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Speaking, I don't. Speaking of Luke, I so there was a a um, piece of fan art that came out. I'm that telling you, man. I just sent you guys. I, I sent you to. I sent. I saw you it. guys it over text. It's Sebastian Stan who has done work for Disney already as Winter Soldier, obviously. So and he's been a, could be he's cool been a to fan see. casting of you yeah. know a Luke please, if they wanted to yes. do a Luke. I'm just it saying, could be it could be really cool to see him if they step bring, into that role. If they bring him back and if they bring Luke back <clears throat> and they bring Mara Jade because they were I mean, I don't want to spoil anything. Cousins, they're two of a kind. Should I, should, <laughs> should I lay down what I'm gonna say? Yeah, yeah, part, okay. yeah, go for it. Yeah. So in, in the, Whip in it the out. series, so at the beginning <laughs> of so Heir to the Empire is the it, it's the Thrawn trilogy. You have Heir to the Empire, um, the man, my Star Wars knowledge is waning on me. Ryan, go look. This, those books. This all takes place. This all takes place um, after Jedi, right? Uh, yes, this is like a few okay. years after Jedi. So okay, they're starting to build the New Republic. the The Empire has been pushed to the outer rim. Um, and there are like, of course, like warlords that have kind of set up shop in different places that the new Republic has to go wipe out. So the, there's mm -hmm. three books. There's, um, air of the empire, um, dark forces rising and the last command. And in those books, uh, with the fall of the empire, Mara Jade is this assassin that was part of the emperor's like inner circle. And he, she, was essentially brainwashed to hate Luke. And anytime she sees him or interacts with him, she, she just wants to like kill the man. Yeah. I guess I do remember Mara Jade. I was thinking of Jaina Solo. Well, for, fast forward Before. a few years, it, like after those books, they actually have, they actually get together, get married and, mm -hmm. have, and have a kid. Gotcha. Um, which most kind of, spouses want to kill each other. You're yeah. Right. Would, so go ahead. Kind of weird. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> but it would be cool to see the, the beginning of that relationship as they meet for sure. the first time in the Mandalorian and see those, those battles take place and that drama be able to unfold so that you have so, not only the story of the Mandalorian, but you also maybe have a backstory of Luke. I mean, maybe that's too much for the Mandalorian though. Well, well that's the thing. I, they're, is, so they're they're going to have so many shows that are going <clears> to <throat> start branching off. Yeah. They've already announced the Obi Wan thing. They're going to do. I'm sure they'll do an Ahsoka Tano. Oh yeah. Show. Well, th anybody um, that doesn't think this is a soft <clears throat> pilot for an Ahsoka show is kidding themselves because that's exactly right. what and this if is. Anybody thinks there's not a Grogu cartoon not coming, <laughs> you're out of your mind. <laughs> where where like, pretty he much goes to college? <laughs> it's going to be like Monsters Inc. But with Grogu, you know. So. Yeah. Now, yeah, I think I think it would be a really cool thing for them to um, explore. And honestly, because of all the division that's been created in the Star Wars community over the last, you know, shoot, go back to the prequel trilogy, it would be a cool way to kind of bridge that gap a little bit to show some love to the, what do you call it, the expanded universe. universe the, yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if more of the... I just think it would be cool to... If more of the Mandalorian episodes are like this, then mm -hmm. I'm on board. 
where you're bringing in nice yeah because <laughs> dude like it's been 20 years of me re- mm-hmm. like you know since there was a brief moment when i remember we were at evo shield working yeah. that the force awakens trailer came out and you came at you came into you know i like star wars you came into my office or to my desk and um you were like did you see the trailer and we started talking about like Vader's helmet and stuff, and like it was like that was the last time I ever saw Jeff excited about <laughs> Star Wars yeah. until like until two days week. ago or three days ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. It's been a while. Um, but yeah, so I guess we can kind of jump into um, first. I guess we could talk about Ahsoka Tano. You know, did you like the character? Did you like her introduction? Um, I know Brandon, obviously you did Al. I want to say something about the sure. costume. Okay. The hair head, whatever that headpiece or whatever that is, you mm-hmm. could see the wrinkles in it. Mm. And that's all I could focus on the whole episode. I was like, come on, <laughs> Disney. <laughs> come I on. It, I think that's intentional. Yeah. Yeah. If you was, go back to like Jabba's too. palace and the return of the Jedi. It looked like bad latex to me. Yeah. I was like, oh. It just looked like really bad, <laughs> shoddy work. And I was, I couldn't take my eyes off of it the whole time. I was like, so that kind of kept me like entertained, I guess you can say, my brain going. Um, but yeah, I, I was like, oh, come on, smooth it out, smooth it out. That's all I could think about. So if it is part of the thing, I just don't like it. But, uh, gotcha. I mean, I guess they could have done a better job because it didn't look intentional. It looked like mm-hmm. bad latex to me. So yeah, um, that kept me out of it. But um, other than that, whatever. I mean, I liked how she kind of disappeared <laughs> and stuff like that into the night. And, um, but and I liked that shot uh, when they first kind of introduced her. I love the her. colors you kind of yeah, talk about going through the woods. The color everything. grading and stuff yeah. in this episode was spot on. Yeah, that's and so very that's what I've from anything they've done so far. I've kind of focused on that this episode. I keep talking about it looks like they're not doing the shading. Like when they were on the speeders, we talked about that, and they were just like talking at a regular volume, and it looked like, you know, it didn't look like they <laughs> yeah. were, hey, yeah. guys, you know, guys. Yeah. Uh, so, um, <laughs> not a, uh, but this episode actually vehicle. felt like they finished the post-production of this episode. The rest of them, for the most part, I would say, felt like they didn't finish the post-production uh, of the episode. Yeah. So it was, I will say that was that- welcomed. We talk a lot about um, how some of these like set pieces feel empty. Some of these locations feel empty. I feel like this one kind of fell into that trap again, where you only, there were really only like five people that lived in this fortress or city or whatever it was until the very mm-hmm. end when they're <laughs> like, you know, they've been like, I guess, um, you know, uh, freed by Ahsoka and Mando. Then they've got like 15 people in the street, but, like, see, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't feel that way. Just, I guess it was the shot when he's walking into the town and it just seemed, it actually reminded me of the Witcher as he was walking through well, there, but it, it, it kind of like, if you live in a dictatorial sort of society, you're going to hide as much as you can. You're not going to be out in the middle of the street unless you yeah, absolutely have true. to. That's the kind of yeah. way that I looked at it. I, I did. I will say the, um, I, I guess who was, the character who put, I guess, the main lady of the the general or whatever of the town, Governor the Emperor, Wing. Or whatever she was, Empress. What was her name, Brandon? I think it was Governor Wing. Yeah, she was rough for me. I of didn't all like the people her. in this episode. She was rough. <laughs> yeah, she was the one. Like, I, I, I actually about. enjoyed like the quirky like bodyguard dude. Like I thought he was kind of cool. Just he was kind of goofy. Oh, you mean Kyle Reese? Wow. Is that really him? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I just Bain. realized that. Michael, Michael Bain. Bain. So, yeah, I mean, but she was just, she was a tough watch for me anytime she said anything. <clears throat> it's good yeah, to Michael Bain. Serious. Yeah. I, I don't well, know. I also didn't like, it was like the most wig looking wig I've ever seen, too. <laughs> well, it was like a straight line yeah. across her forehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was sitting there going, Is she supposed to be somebody? Is like she guest starring? And do I just not know who she is? Like, who, mm-hmm. who is this person? And um, because I couldn't imagine her getting through all the auditions knowing there's 150 other people auditioning <laughs> for the same part. 
I just, I just, I that. No, I mean, I get you. Wrinkles I, I did first. Not enjoy the perform- yeah. Wrinkles first. <laughs> Wrinkle, wrinkles and and then Queen and Ma- Queen and McGee over here. <laughs> I didn't like her at all. So Man, yeah, my expectations were so low that. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, when they said, this is amazing. <laughs> You're like, they said Thrawn. <laughs> they did. <laughs> did anybody so, else see any of the gifts? When, like, no. Oh man, I'll have to send you some. They were so good. What is it? So, just like fanboy. Yeah, it's stuff? just like fan. Well, it's just like people yeah. freaking out. Yeah. So <laughs> before the episode, I was home for Thanksgiving, and I had, of course, you know, with Thanksgiving and everything, I hadn't watched the episode just yet. And I came home Sunday, and Sunday morning I was saying goodbye to my, all, all my family and everything. My nephew and my brother-in-law said, did you watch it yet? And I was like, no, I haven't seen it yet. Dude, wait, wait, wait for it. Like, they were <laughs> geeking out hard. And I was like, well, who's it going to be? And I thought, like, the way their reaction to it <laughs> was like. You're like, like, who's Thrawn? Are they bringing? No, I knew who Thrawn was. I'm, I'm very, I'm very uh well versed in the titles of the books <laughs> so i know that gotcha. the thrawn series is a big deal mm-hmm. i've bought quite a few of them um so i thought like the way they were acting i was like dang is vader coming back <laughs> like what's happening here? <laughs> like i didn't know what was gonna happen and um uh, and so then uh whenever it happened i was like oh that's it that's the one because my nephew uh hunter is his name uh loves mm-hmm. that series of books so he is through the moon so he's just like you jeff he, Dude, we totally hang he, he can <laughs> he cannot wait he is he was kind of uh he liked the series just fine he you know he's a fan and everything but um he was kind of like it's okay and this that and the other but he's a purist just like you so he one uh, thing i wanted to ask to you too jeff was um just to kind of give a little bit of perspective on who thrawn is and why people are so like why people like this character so much. Yeah, so yeah, he's a imperial officer but he's an alien, so he's kind of a an odd character because there are no other at least to my knowledge, there are no other non-human Oh, uh, that's interesting. I never thought about no that. No other yeah. non-human um commanders or admirals that are in the imperial navy. Mhm. He's um, got like blue skin and blue red skin, eyes. Blue skin, red eyes, yeah. Um yeah. he also is like, he's just a tactician. And he's gotcha. not as, you know, the Imperial officers were often cruel and they would just kill, mm-hmm. you know, men that were under them um, just at, at will. And he was never mm-hmm. like that. If, if somebody showed promise, then he would try to um, encourage them to to do something a little bit better. Um, so is he like, is he a pure antagonist or is he? he, he well, he's a, he's just a... Um, he is a character that like b- kind of believes what he believes and he's for the uh-huh. empire and he wants power. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but he's just a cool, a cool character because he outmaneuvers most everyone that he comes in contact with. And the way that he gotcha. does that at the beginning of one of the, I think it's the first book, like one of the Imperial officers walks into his, um, chambers and he's like studying art it was like an art museum and yeah. he said that if if you can study the art from different worlds you can understand the mechanics of how those individuals think and that that's what he brings into the the fold so he's a, he's a gotcha. foe that isn't easily manipulated or outthought um, so he's essentially it sounds like he's kind of like <laughs> the only non numbskull <laughs> Like other than like the Sith Admiral. on that side, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so he's also, he's also interesting because he's a collector. He collects different things, and one of the things that he is he, he so he's aware of the Jedi. He's aware of the Force. He collects these like salamander type um, <clears throat> animals, and I can't remember the name of them off the top of my head. But what it does is it mm-hmm. creates a Force vacuum. So anybody that comes in contact with him on his ship or anywhere around him. Um, is unable to use their powers. So when Luke comes in oh, contact snap. with him, he can't, I think Mara Jade as well. Um, and then he has a group of these aliens, assassins that uh, guard him 24 seven and they are lethal and nobody, even Jedi have tr- like trouble getting wow. uh, close to him. Interesting. So cool. 
No, I'm yeah, I'm excited to see. <clears throat> um, my my friend texted me the other day. He was like, "So you think they're like actually gonna pay off the Thrawn thing, or is that just fan service?" I'm like, "I think they're gonna pay it off." Or yeah, they better. People yeah. are gonna have their heads. How many episodes <laughs> are supposed to be in this season? Do we know? Eight. Eight. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, I don't. So I don't. it's gonna be like the what? What y'all call him? The Darth. Gideon or whatever his name is. What's his name? <laughs> Moff Gideon. Moff yeah, Gideon. Moff Gideon. He looks like uh, Earth Gideon. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he hands out Bibles at hotels. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so, uh, but no, I I'm afraid they're gonna do that where they just leave you hanging for season three, mm-hmm. and so I don't have uh, any expectation that it's gonna be a Mandalorian thread. I think it's all Ahsoka spinoff series thread that it's setting up. Yeah. You think? Well, I agree with you. I don't think I they're going to have as big I mean, a person as Rosario Dawson play the role without oh, yeah, future. For sure. I think that that's endeavors. very intentional. Um, which is why this is pretty much I, well, why they didn't cast the girl that voices her from the animated series cuz she's she she has cosplayed as that character like she she her her likeness is kind of used as her and so she's just not a name. So that's, you know, they've that instead of doing something like they did for Bo-Katan where they hired Al's favorite actress to play her in live action, who also voices yeah. her on the show, Gross. they could have done that for <laughs> this, but she's just not a big name. So they got Rosario Dawson. And yeah. I just feel like that it's going to be one of those things. It's going to be one of those things that, that is, I mean, this Disney we're talking about with all the success they've had in Marvel. I just think everything's going to interweave. Like, yeah, I think all these shows are. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not Jeff. You seem surprised <clears throat> when us when you said, or when I said that I don't think that it'll Thrawn will play a part in Mando. I think it'll be an Ahsoka. Well, I know. thought you were just saying like the, the like continuing the Mando thread. You think that's going to die off? Well, because that I is think. that that seems like her mission. It doesn't seem like it has anything to do with Mando. It seemed like she's on a she's got a vendetta to go after Thrawn. You know, you know she that seems like what her whole purpose is right now. And yeah. so it seems like that's just, you know, unrelated to Mando's storyline. Uh, I mean, it could, it could, sure. I also it could interweave. Like, though, I mean, they could cross over. I, but. So the, the vibe I got, <clears throat> and it very well could be what you're saying, but I feel like we're getting to the point where, like, the Moff Gideon thing's got to be closed. Because, I mean, you're talking, it's <clears throat> going on two seasons here. And he's got the tracking beacon on the ship and they've already fought a couple times. Like, I just feel like that set, like that arc is going to close at some point. And I feel like they could be opening up the next, whatever the next thing is like. Yeah. For the well, I mean, storyline. Yeah. <laughs> so well, the thing about this show is that the overarching story is so like loosely progressed that it could, I mean, who knows how long they're planning on, uh, like milking. I just that. don't think it's that compelling, like that they could drag this thing out over. Like at a certain point, he's got to take Baby Yoda to the the what Seeing Stone uh, or whatever. It Grogu, was. Grogu, bro. Yeah. And it, like it's got to get wrapped up at some point. Put some yeah, respect on my name, people. <laughs> I mean, I say maybe two more seasons, like the, uh, the 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 next season and then the following season to wrap it up. Kind yeah, of, kind of what I said. Like I, I'm almost like I feel like next season is going to be the end of it, and then well, they're the getting close to jumping or... the shark. They're getting very close to jumping the shark. So, uh, um, I'm. It kind of feels like they're running out of ideas, like because they're having to bring everything in. But uh, well, I, I, like so. I get the vibe that the final battle or what their next confrontation, whether it's the final one could be at this on this planet where they what take, if, where they're taking Grogu. What if the last episode is just like a bad sitcom ending where his ship just breaks down? He's like, well, we'll live here. You know, like <laughs> it's like, can't get it fixed anymore. <laughs> like, it's just, I'll raise you like you're my own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to marry one of these 12 women I've met along the way. and They'll be your mommy. Yeah. All right, so let's let's dig into uh, the name, the Grogu. Brandon, tell why you don't like it, or was it Al that doesn't like it? <clears throat> Both of us. Yeah, I think I don't think either. Of us. All right, I guys. Just, my mind goes places that I will not specify. 
here. I like can't even think about what this could possibly be. My mind be. didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. I want to know. Yeah, well, it's a it's a, it's a family friendly podcast, so okay. can't. Brandon will reveal on social what I, you his, just uh, if you if you think about growing goo. I mean, there's not many places you can go. Sorry. Are you thinking about the shot from Silence of the Lambs? Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Well, yep. that's perverse. <laughs> Al gets it. But no, I just I think it's just a. I mean, I don't hate it, but it's not like. It sounds like an Al review. <laughs> <laughs> it's a name. Brandon, Brandon it's a name. Like it, tracking. It's a name. You can it. say it. But it's not you good. You can watch it or not or whatever. <laughs> <It's, No. laughs> uh, but, um, okay, so just for instance, you guys, I bought the uh, the child Grogu. toy mm-hmm. here. But it says <laughs> the child on it. And by the uh-huh. way. Oh, isn't that adorable? Ryan, go get yours. By the by the way, by the way, Al's got about fifty of these that he yeah. bought up from Target. They're available you see for me on the purchase. Got them in my trunk. <laughs> so, uh, but no, um, Al pulls up at Walmart. Yeah, and just drops his truck bed. Yeah, <laughs> Grogu, baby. Yes. You just don't yeah. go near that man. Um, yeah, I I don't I just I don't know. So Yoda. Uh, Jeff mentioned earlier, Yoda is, you know, a name. Yoda kind of rolls off the tongue. Grogu doesn't really roll off the tongue. It just, it doesn't have that marketability that Yoda has, you know, to me. But maybe it's because Yoda's been in the zeitgeist for so long. Yeah, I feel like it's just new. I think if you had a real thick southern accent. Like, I just don't think it, I just don't, I just don't think it matches this cute little adorable baby yo. See, I think the opposite. I think it definitely does. Okay. I agree with That's my Ryan. professional well, opinion. It's not it's not it's not <laughs> I guess the um you know, it's not something to get hung up on and debate about. <laughs> so, you know what? I you know what I would love? I would love for to see a brainstorm sesh between Al and Brandon about what they should have named Grogu. <laughs> well, <laughs> I would have put money, and I think we've talked about this before. I I just knew that it was going to be a girl, and not a boy like everybody assumed it was. That was going to be everything Brandon. else in Star Wars is. Yeah, uh, so. that's a no to the brainstorm <laughs> session. <laughs> um, Thanks, Kathleen Kennedy. But anyway, what else do you want to talk power. about? Not not. All right, so Brandon and Al did not dig it. Jeff, you. Yeah, cool I'm fine with it. it. Yeah. It doesn't bother me. Okay. There's nothing I mean, that's gotcha. like I mean it would be funny. Every episode it feels like there's like one baby Yoda controversy and this so, is this well, episode. So baby speaking Yoda of controversy, controversy, I don't pay attention to this stuff nearly as much as others, but I just kept seeing people were upset uh, at Rosario Dawson for some odd reason. And I can only imagine because they don't have anything better in life to do. They were upset this week. So did she do what something? I have no idea. People are just mad about it. And, you know, <laughs> people's YouTube videos, we need to talk about Rosario Dawson. And people are like doing that stupid, that stupid <laughs> thumbnail, you know, like Rosario Dawson's. And so it's just, I don't know. So I, I, think, haven't, I haven't seen Clone Wars, so I don't know if it did the role I, justice, but I enjoyed her performance. <clears> and, <throat> yeah, I'm just, I don't know. just, People stop being mad about everything. Everything can't make you Look, mad. And this is yeah, Al. Al. This. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you dip wads can make me mad talking about BVS all the time. But I mean, everything in or life cannot make you mad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it seems like I I don't know. You got people like Jeff who actually subscribe to everything that is Star Wars, has read ad nauseum everything. You know. And then you have people that just kind of jump on the bandwagon. And I feel like those are the people that act like they're mad to get clicks. So I could be wrong. Probably. But if it feels like the true purist really are just like, I don't like what it. I think, what I think I'll stay happens, away from it, but I don't like it. What I think happens is how you give in to the outrage. And so you, the algorithm <laughs> knows that you give in to that. Yeah, That's you, how you, you always click, know about all the all outrage these. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's why what you're always like there was some controversial stuff about this like I don't know I didn't Me see and Brandon it Brandon are like what <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I don't go looking for outrage 
Uh, I just am outraged. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Super healthy. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I have another channel, everybody. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's even redder than he is right now on that channel mm. all the time. Mm. <laughs> Grogu Corner. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, all right. Um, so I guess we're kind of reaching time here. Um, do you guys well, have let's talk about Let's talk a little on? bit about the episode, I guess. We hadn't talked a ton about it besides, you know, Rosario was like this good. Sure. Okay. I mean, I thought, um, so we just I thought, I thought that... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought, Alpha. You know. Well, no, we talked more about like, you want to talk more tangential about stuff than you know the episode. I get it, Brandon. Time. We'll keep talking about Star Wars. <laughs> well, we got this new guest on the pod. I figure we might might as well make the most of our time with him. You know? Yeah, I think Jeff's going to be joining us more. He, He's a what time? Balance. You said you got you go to bed in fifteen. You got fifteen more minutes, Fest. Oh so. man, yeah. So I'm a I'm a I'm a early to bed, early riser sort of guy. So we're gonna we're gonna milk you for all it's worth. I gotta go hit Jake's. Uh, before anybody gets there. Yeah, there you go. Five. Yep. Look at all my Arnold <laughs> nice. posters. Yeah. I thought, uh, what? so, the. I mean, the big set piece, I mean, it's all kind of around one set piece for the most part, but as far as, like, the end where they have the whole siege of this village or whatever it's called, fortress, <laughs> I don't know what it's actually, some sort of... Um, but, I mean, it just seems like a village to me. Yeah. Um, well, can I talk about the I droids th- for a second? Yeah. Yes, sure. Those droids were amazing. <laughs> Please, yeah, they were they, awesome. Like they, they, they weren't like they didn't crack jokes. They, they did a freaking they job. Well, yeah, I mean, I, they, <laughs> so they did. did you, they had their did own you language. Like IG? So, yeah, did was, you like IG Eleven? I did like IG earlier on in the show. Yeah. Okay. I was yeah, a little felt- disappointed that it was an IG eighty eight, but I, I got it because there was like gotcha. maybe there was like a licensing <laughs> sure. issue. IG eighty eight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. It felt like uh, Chappy a little bit. What, I, I like yeah. their, yeah. I like their design. These new Sorry, droids. Yeah. I thought they were really cool looking. I th- I think um they they reminded me of like K two S O as far as their like overall build, <laughs> but I guess a little bit more like. <laughs> I like the. F- they were like very functional. Like when he like jumped up on the roof and yeah. like it was just it was very different from like just like the, <laughs> just like repeat droid massive armies of droids that just get shot up and are really useless. Yeah. Like, Seems they, like they I, actually like, I felt like the characters were menacing in this, yeah. like the droids and the folks, like even the guards, even though they were yeah. not competent mm-hmm. in handling themselves against a Jedi, yeah. but they were like the overall atmosphere was, there was like a, yeah, it actually felt edge. like there was a, a the mat, the ma- the masks and voice modulation they did for the guards was cool too yeah it felt like there was more tension in this episode than most it felt yeah. a lot like um the batman begins doc scene where like ahsoka's like <laughs> through yeah. like these like corridors <laughs> um and you know she'll Always like pop back out to batman. Does. Back to batman. <laughs> she'll pop out take out one then disappear you know that kind of thing I was just yeah. waiting for one, but where, where are you? Are you? <laughs> yeah. They, they kind of reminded me of Here. Cobra Commander, those droids. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. That's what I was like, oh, man. That's the best version of Cobra Commander that's ever been on the big screen. Then. That's, so. I agree with that. <laughs> uh, what did you guys think about like the final like you know, one-on-one fight between Ahsoka and uh, Governor Wing? As the weak spot of the yeah. really choreography for me. Yeah, I thought it was too. Man, I Is thought that, that the was shot awesome. Where she does like she pulls the. No, that was she's like sneaking up behind two guards. Or Is that guard. where that was? I thought. Yeah. As far as like, I don't want to see lightsabers in the Mandalorian. But, <laughs> but I do you have did. to say that that was a cool shot. I was like, it was well, I like. Yeah. It was something that has never been done before that I thought was very. Yeah, that was uh, cool. Well, the cool thing about her having, you know, dual lightsabers is, I mean, and she's, if you ever like Google Ahsoka, she, she does that like underhanded, like lightsaber wield. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like that they kind of paid homage to that a few times. Um, I did, I will say this. I think that you, I mean, you could tell, in my opinion, you could tell when they used, an actual stunt double and when they used Rosario Dawson because Rosario couldn't quite pull off the athleticism that the stunt double could, in my opinion. Mm. Like she looked a little stiff. 
um, in comparison. There were a couple shots when she was running on the roof where I was like, it felt like, uh, you know, Brandon, you remember that scene in uh, Batman, um, X Men Apocalypse, where Wolverine's <laughs> running into the woods, yeah, and yeah. it just lasts for like forty five yeah. seconds. Like that's what it felt like when she was running well, on the roof. Gotcha. Some of the fighting also was. Uh, felt a little sl- like um, like it was slow, like you could feel the cor- choreography a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm not talking about like, you know, the old Vader versus Obi-Wan slow. I'm just saying it just felt like you could almost feel them counting. Okay, one and two and three and four and, right. four and 12 and 17. And, yeah. And so like I like the I like the kind of like the virulness of the fights at the beginning where she was everything was really quick moving and like yeah. intentional and then like that fight was just like very like <laughs> yeah was, and i don't know I, man i love that part i don't i mean you know, i felt I, like it yeah. was very much like you know obviously super inspired by the bride versus what is her name the Ishi, what's the what's the oren ishi from kill bill um which is obviously inspired by this like, is my this is my follow-up but, to brandon's uh comment on the last show confession i've never seen kill bill <laughs> i was waiting for al's face i was looking right at al on screen to see what face he was gonna make <laughs> you guys depress me like i was like hey let's start a movie podcast and y'all are like never seen any movies so, <laughs> so it's like i only watch batman and look guys batman, think about ben honest, affleck naked. You, right? yeah it's yeah. like good lord is this what it felt like brandon i'm so sorry <laughs> Well, getting Good us Lord. back on track, Brandon, I agree with you, man. I thought that the, the the lightsaber battle at the beginning between the guards and Ahsoka was, like, I felt like they aired it out. Like, it wasn't so much lightsaber. It was, like, some martial arts mixed with lightsaber, and they were able to balance right. that equation very nicely. And then at the end, you're mm-hmm. expecting to see it because you've already seen kind of that in and out fight you might as well see the whole right. thing and it wasn't her her moves and her i mean some of it might have been it was a little, very different it was just like a super departure from the way she fought at the beginning of the yeah i mean i see that episode. but um i think i was more looking at it from is it too much lightsaber sort of look instead of like the fighting style well, I think that's what I mean. Like, it's it's less like functional, and it's more of like it's, that, like it's stylistic. Di- like that. I mean, exactly. But well, yeah, it's I mean, intentionally. That's so. a way to I say. I mean, it. it's like it's like one of those like okay, mutual respect type fights where they're like showing off their you know like it's like a like you know an old classic like. You know, I mean, yeah, I, I get what they were doing. I just enjoyed the begin or the fight at the beginning a lot better. The I sound guess. design was more. awesome. Like I loved like the electric lightsaber on Beskar still like sound effects that they well, however they kind of pioneered yeah, that sound. That. Everything they did was, with Beskar in this episode was awesome. In my opinion, the sound. <laughs> I put that on last night before we went to bed just to listen to the sound. <laughs> I was like, this sounds so cool. Listen to it, Melissa. Just listen. She, <laughs> No, she wasn't. She, that, oh was, my god! She's no. like, she, she's like, Brandon. We've listened to this three nights in a yeah. row. It's Christmas music no. time, Brandon. That that was just me. I didn't allow her to sit in on that one. Um, Ouch! Yeah, didn't allow her. Nope. Oh, you mansplained Mandalorian to her. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the good old days, Monst- Jeff. That's how, monster- how they do it in Ralston. <laughs> Like, hey, boys, um, let me tell you about something. You, you no, get I, out there, barefoot and pregnant. I'm watching Mandalorian. <laughs> I just, um, no, nah, I mean, I, I just, I love that fight. I thought it was great. I mean, um, I mean, it may be the fact that I haven't seen Kill Bill. Like, I don't know how. I mean, Al, you've seen Kill Bill. You, do you not Plenty. see the. I can see the inspiration. Yeah, I mean that whole wide shot with them on the bridge, the you know it's mm-hmm. like a water motif. You know, even if you haven't seen Kill Bill, that's a very famous scene that everybody kind of shows Except everywhere. It only took like eight weeks to shoot it. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just, I mean, the only thing that was missing was like a little like water ladle thing that was like going up and down uh, in the background. <laughs> People that have seen it will get that, but so. Um, Indiana Jones for Brandon and then every other movie for Ryan. That's what we got to watch. All right, good. 
Come on. What? You haven't seen Indiana Jones? Exactly. <laughs> Hold on. What Indiana Jones no, have you no. not seen? Hang on, no. Jeff. Hang yeah, on. Which is, one has he seen? Part. Ask him which one he has seen. Which one have you seen? Please don't say the Crystal Skull. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's gone. He said it's bedtime. <laughs> this is my Christmas <laughs> gift right here. Oh, son. Hey, Jeff. I own it. I own all of them. I just what haven't watched them. What are you waiting on? Just He's watched BVS 35 <laughs> times. I, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I'm scared to watch it because I don't, it's like, uh, it's. I think it's too, it might be too late for me. I don't know. Dude, no. It's like Raiders of Thank the you. Lost Ark is my Thank least you. favorite. Did you watch you. them when you were young? Thank you. Of course. Yeah. But they're exactly. good books, though. They're even <laughs> though, like, Brandon, they, they, Brandon, I'm going to agree with up. you. I can see where, where you could get. Okay, so do you like Jurassic Park? Yeah, I watched it when I was young. But do you like it now? This is, yeah. This is I watched it when I was young on this podcast so, already. <laughs> so, Jeff, I'm gonna bring you. I'm gonna bring you up to speed on this debate that we that we're all thinking about. Correct me if I'm wrong. Brandon like believes we're about to even the even the odds here. With Brandon this believes <laughs> that you have to have the nostalgia bug in order to like movies that are older than. <clears throat> I think it I depends know. on the movie. I think I think I think, I think like, like I think it circuit? depends on the movie. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Five Alive. <laughs> <laughs> but any, I think that anything that Spielberg has done, like, kind of st- stands the test of time. Jurassic Park, Jaws. Oh, this um, is so it's beautiful. hard to it's hard to really say though, isn't it? Because <laughs> like, you can't put yourself what? in someone else's shoes that would be it's seeing it later hard to on say in life. Because you haven't seen the movies. But I'm saying, like, you you can't say that for sure. <laughs> Al's like, yes. Because you saw I'm it like when you were a kid. I'm like the Right now, my heart's growing <laughs> 10 times. But seriously, okay, so this is my argument. A good movie is a good movie. No matter how long ago it was, you're going to pick that up. You don't need nostalgia for a good movie. I agree. Yes, you do need the nostalgia bug for, like, a short circuit or something like that. But a good movie writer. is a good Okay, so or, or, I think yeah. I think I think we're getting a little too extreme with the conversation. I don't think Brandon or I are saying that it can't like we can't think it's good. It's like yeah. when like you talk about like The Shining, like you we're saw just it not, in the theater, or, or how you you know how you experienced it growing up. Like it's just I like, didn't watch it growing it's up. It's a foundation for you know what I mean. It's but like a the foundation is for like such an extreme though. Like Indiana Jones is like. Like a good it's palatable it's just an, for so it's just many. An example. Yeah. Like when I watch it, I don't know. I'll let you know. <laughs> which will be tomorrow. <laughs> so, okay. Look, so, Jeff, like you got homework, Brandon. you're invited on to Cinema Machine because we're going to do a full series where Brandon watches all of the Indiana Jones movies in the proper order. We're going to do that, and he's going to respond to them, you know, and things of that nature. So, there, I said it. I think uh, we but, should have a camping trip at Brandon's house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Good. The I'll be asleep immediately. <laughs> I'll drink caffeine for the first time in like five years. So, uh, yeah, no, well, but you're you're invited back on because I feel like you're going to be my ally in this. So I'm excited. Okay. Well, I'm not going to like set soldiers. out to dislike it. I'll just you know I'm just because I mean there've been you movies will. that I've, I'm saying you I've won't checked out. dislike it. I hope so. <laughs> um, I'll kill you. I'm just kidding. Well, let's play. so there's. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, and um, Last Crusade. Last Crusade. Last so, Crusade's my favorite. Yeah. And Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It's no, we don't. Tone. We don't say that. We it's don't the best that. one I've seen. Oh my god! <laughs> <It> and the worst. <laughs> um, please, I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not on. This is. I'm a guest on this show. Please hit Brandon <laughs> up in the comment section. <laughs> Al, you don't tell them what to do in the comments on our show. Yeah. Uh, hit those comments in the comments, please. <laughs> <laughs> to be right, fair, I've got, I've got to be a... fair though, I mean, this is a Star Wars. I didn't really like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but you know, all right, nobody I've got, does. I've got to rein it back in, guys. We're, it's a total turn. We'll talk Star Wars. We'll have another episode where we're, we'll get into all this stuff because um, obviously it'll be entertaining. I do. Uh, I do. Th- <laughs> thank okay, you guys for one bringing thing, Jeff on. One thing that I do want to <laughs> say before I don't know if anybody else has anything else to say about this episode, but I really. Wish they would have killed the little like the Grogu. Asian guy that like came out and was like, <laughs> "You take that back." Wait, out. there's a there's a droid behind you, and he turns around. And I 
I, I really wanted there to be some stakes. Like, they really have stakes on this show, and that guy should have died to just show a little bit of, like, consequence. This is Disney. This I don't is know, really <laughs> but still. Yeah, yeah. Well, the guy that was apparently, like, the leader of this town before they came yeah, and correct, overtook yeah. it. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you have this moment where he kills Michael Bain's character, and then so the guy I walks I out, and he's like, oh. not dying. But I, w- I did, I was kind of like... I think he kills two droids, right? Or is it just one? Two. Either way. Yeah, so I like I wanted there to be like a little bit more than Mando just like popping both of them with one shot. He shoots around. that one in the head. She cuts the other one in half. That's right. Yeah, I know right. there were only two of them. But. <laughs> Brandon's anyway, watched I, this three I, times. I just, he knows. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just, I just, I just, I thought it would have been I can quote unquote sure. brave on their <clears throat> part to actually have some stakes and have somebody die. I mean, they had they had I mean, IG eleven die last season, <laughs> so I guess. Oh, and uh, I have spoken guy, whatever his name is, Krill or something. Oh, Quill, yeah. Yeah, Nick Krill. Nolte. Um, yeah, that's true. So they, just so, I mean, that wasn't even a character we really know, but they, you know, they yeah, man. But him. I really liked him a lot. I was hoping that he would actually not die because I wouldn't mind seeing more of him. Which one? I wish nobody would die. That's how good. Oh yeah, I thought you were talking about the the Asian leader. No. I was like, we didn't no. even know him. <laughs> 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 Jeff <laughs> really. Jeff just felt really attached to this guy. I thought you said you didn't like Rogue One because everybody like never get to know anybody. Uh, Jeff, can I? Um, I have one more question for you. If you could see one of the book series turned into a that's a good question. Trilogy or I, be Thrawn, I'll, I'll, man, I'll for stick. sure. Okay, there we go. All right. And the reason being is because it's the continuation. Uh, I mean, the politics are kind of boring of mm-hmm. the building of the New Republic, but the storyline of Han and Leia. You know, they're she's pregnant with twins, and she has two kids, uh, Jason and Jana. and then later on she has a, another child named Anakin, who's like very very. Four sensitive? No, no. <laughs> Mara Jade and Luke battle it out, finally get married, and then have a son, and his name is freaking Ben. ben. You have to, you have, Brandon. You got to tell the story now about when Jeff. I was like it. Ben. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were in the theater and we saw this late too. This was my fourth time this seeing is Force Awakens. Force this Awakens. Is the first, yeah, and I, we didn't Jeff... see it. It came out when uh, in December of right before Christmas. 15 or 16? It was one of the two. 15, yeah. 14, or 15, yeah. Yeah. We didn't see it until... And we were, there February. was like only like one other family in the theater. That sat right next to us. <laughs> behind us, and the kid was coughing up a lung the whole time. But yeah. <laughs> during the whole like uh, Han and Ben on the like scaffolding type scene. <laughs> Han, <laughs> so great. Han's walking out there, and Jeff's like, just like Jason, Jason, <laughs> <laughs> and Han goes Ben, <laughs> and Jeff dies inside. <laughs> That's when I hated it was like, all. No, <laughs> yeah, he pulled a Vader. Yes. No, <laughs> Disney. Yep. Oh man, yeah. that was so funny. I don't so think sad. you were alone in that. Not to well, say I was that way. Jeff, but I just. Thrawn is a part of the Rebels show, to my knowledge. I know, I know, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know anything about the Rebels show, and I don't know anything about... Um, Clone Wars? The Clone Wars, yeah. yeah. I'm too old for and all Well, that. I think those are the only two things that I are am, still canon. I just... So, might want to get to know them. People are religious <laughs> about those Clone Wars shows. Like, yeah, they, they love I, those things. There's a yeah, lot I of think episodes. there is, is much... Uh, in love with those shows as they uh, people who are in love with the books mm-hmm. but to go back to your question yeah. the only other series that i absolutely loved was the han solo trilogy and it was the the story <laughs> explaining his his origin story from and you were he like was ex- solo movies coming out all right was, yeah another turd of disappointment <laughs> well okay so well, that's what right worries that- me about the sebastian stan thing playing luke skywalker if that actually is a th- i know it's fan thing but like that's the problem I had with Solo for the main part was having another actor play this iconic character that we know is Harrison Ford's version of the character. He just didn't have any Harrison Fordness, like any Han, like I elements. I have any issue with 
that's I just, no. Yeah, I had no, I had zero no. I had zero issue with his 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 character. I had more issue with the underlying um the brown the story wasn't like the, the po- books. No, it wasn't that. It was just like <laughs> the movie was brown. The political nonsense that they brought into the the yeah the scope of the movie. I just how'd you like uh uh what's his name red face darth maul is that his name uh showing up at the end his name is red face i didn't see it yep oh that's right you only saw (laughs) yeah (laughs) so so he shows up at he shows up at the end does he really oh yeah he does metal legs I feel like we need to have a whole. Well, uh, don't get too excited. Just like I'm back in. <laughs> don't get too excited, Jeff. It's a hologram. He's not like he's like in the movie. In the movie. so hold on. Is he is he legless? Is he like in a wheelchair? No, he's he's got he's, he's got, got metal, like or, uh, metal legs. Metal metal legs. Metal talent, like like yeah. Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Titanium alloy. I get that joke now, guys. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, this guy hadn't seen Forrest Gump fully until a couple weeks ago. That's <laughs> what I'm dealing with, Jeff. So. <laughs> Anyway, well, whatever, guys. Uh, I gotta go watch PBS. I gotta go. So, uh, oh, good lord! <laughs> I'll meet you. I'll meet um, you over there. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, anybody else got anything they want to touch on for this one, or um, do you want to wrap it up? Uh, I'm good. Oh, okay. King of one more thing. All right, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, um, I really thought that whenever she's like, you know, when Ahsoka's like, "Where's your friend?" at the end, he's like. Oh, he's uh, back of the ship. I'll go get him. I thought that they were setting us up that he had gotten like captured or like, you know, like something was like, you know, because it seems like that's that could have been like this inevitable like conclusion that at some point, because he's always leaving him behind in places, somebody's <laughs> going to end up like capturing yeah. him. That's where I thought that was headed when, because it, it was such a like, and I know now I know that it was like he's intending to leave him there with her or whatever. <laughs> But that was my um, one gripe about the episode was he said I'll go <laughs> I'll go get him and then she showed up at the ship <laughs> to pick <yeah>. him up. <laughs> I'll go get him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just really relieved there wasn't any frog people in this episode. That's yeah, Al's still ha- Al's still having nightmares about the frog I people. I don't like the frog folk. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was kind of cheesy. It's like, no, Al's afraid of frogs. Oh, you're yeah, afraid well, of frogs. I, I don't like them. Um, <laughs> but I did. I also didn't like the costumes. I thought they looked phony, and they look like a um, they look like somebody walking around a theme park more than they look like something in a movie. They yeah, I agree. At all. Yeah, thank you. Mm. I don't like this. <laughs> we got to get off. How's <laughs> <laughs> being vindicated? The only oh my one. <laughs> <laughs> this is our show. <laughs> 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 Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know we love you, Jeff. <laughs> All right. Um, Not so you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can leave. <laughs> um, so so we'll be back again next week to review Chapter 14. Jeff, we should um, have you. We're, I, I think we should do like a whole like season recap at the end of all this and have Jeff back on at least. Yes, yeah, be fun. And, and if, we can it, try and, and convince if, Chris to... Unless, like, Thrawn shows up too. in the next episode, we'll have you back for the next episode as well. <laughs> yeah. Whenever Thrawn shows up, you're guaranteed to show up again. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, wanna, I think we should have a live We'd reaction. We'd like to book you for them. Do we need to talk <laughs> know, to your right? manager? Or how does... Can, how you, uh, can you just have a, a webcam set up in your living room whenever you <laughs> yeah. watch every episode? GoPro, turn the GoPro on. For, know, whenever, right? uh, <laughs> for whenever Thrawn comes on. We can watch it like we watch Eagle's Nest or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we got to see that dance. Man, it yeah. was amazing. <laughs> I've never really seen you happy before, so I'd love to see it. Elizabeth was like, <laughs> "What is why why are you so excited? I don't understand what's happening." <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> what have I got myself into? Yeah. She's like busy like googling who Thrawn is on her phone. Yeah. <laughs> What's a Thrawn? <laughs> then Jeff just like sits up Indian style like, okay, let me explain. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. He's rocking right. back and forth. He's blue. He's kind of, all right. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> breathe, Jeff. Breathe. Oh, oh my god. So here, uh, chapter three. <laughs> just read this chapter. You'll understand everything. <laughs> 
That's good. It's good uh, to all get right. excited. All right, Brandon, anything else? Do we <laughs> squeeze anything else, Brandon? No, nah, that's it. That's all I got. No, we're good. Oh, but one more thing. <laughs> one more. <laughs> <laughs> I have to start I have to start muting Brandon at the end of the episode. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll be back next week to talk through Chapter 14 with you guys. Um you can, in the meantime, if you want to chat with us about the Mandalorian, hit us up on Twitter at Capecast Show. Um, and then we've also got a podcast that we do. Yes, Al's on it. It's called Cinema Machine, where <laughs> we review movies each week. So we invite you to um, join along with us there. And you can uh, find us on Instagram at Cinema Machine Pod. Um, so until next week, get after it, guys. Thanks, Jeff. That's thanks right. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks Bye, Jeff. Having, Bye. Yeah, thanks for being Bye. here. Yeah, it was great.